Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bantry Bay Festival of Food and uh, it seems we all brought the good weather with us today and I hope you're all hungry and you're go we're going to have some fantastic food for you to taste this afternoon and first kicking off we have um, Henry Hegarty from Walkabout and Henry's going to be cooking a Thai grilled beef red curry. So the steak is going to the pan. So we're going to start with uh, two good tablespoons of coconut cream. So first up is the uh, ginger garlic free paste. You just stir that through into the coconut and keep stirring to dissolve the paste in the coconut. So we're cooking this at a high heat to start uh, just to get the smells out and the aroma of the spices and the, the while we're constantly stirring we then will moisten it with a bit of um, a bit of water. What was that you put in there now Henry? That was the red curry paste. We'll be cooking the steak to rare and then we'll be adding it into the the curry for the last five minutes. When you're making this at home Henry you can make it as, as spicy as you like. As spicy as you like. Um, I've added about six tablespoons of curry paste to this so it might be a bit spicy so we can moisten it at the end with coconut cream to take the heat out of it. So I'm just going to add shallot to the paste. So the shallots are going in now. A bit of flavour. Yeah. We're going to take the steak off and we're just going to leave it rest until we're ready to use it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of palm sugar. About Two tablespoons. So I'm going to add half of the onions now, just so they soften. We'll add the other half near the end. It's going to give two squirts of fish sauce. So I'm just going to zest a couple of limes, just for the uh, seasoning at the end of the curry. And I'm going to have two limes as well for lime juice to season as well. So with a Thai curry, you should keep that. Uh, tasting it as you're going along just to see how the different flavours are developing every time you add in a new component and the idea at the end is to have a perfect balance of hot, sour, sweet and salty. So I'm going to add the stock now. What are you going to serve this with Henry? Um, we're going to serve it with uh, steamed uh, jasmine rice and a little bit of coriander on top. Also, what would go well with it would be like a little bit of cucumber pickle or something like that. How else could you cool it down, Henry? Could you add some maybe yogurt? Um, you you could, like traditionally Thais wouldn't use yogurt, um, but co like generally they would use coconut cream to, to cool it. So next up, these are fresh lime leaves. So you nearly find them in every Thai curry pretty much. Would you substitute chicken instead of the beef as you well? Could, yeah, uh, chicken or pork work well as well. So I'm just going to chop a bit of coriander for garnish. Now you're adding the rest of the onions now. The onions. Going to go for a squeeze of lime juice. So I'm just going to turn that down, leave that simmer while I slice the steak. So the steak I'm going to slice at a 45 degree angle across the grain. So I'm now going to add the beef. So I'm going to add the bamboo shoots, squeeze the lime juice. So I'm just going to top with um, coriander. So bingo, it's all over guys. That's it ladies and gentlemen, big round for Henry. And this is our second cookery demonstration and now after our lovely Spicy, very spicy, red curry. We're going to cool things down a bit with uh, Caroline Crowley from Seaside Kitchen who is going to prepare a fantastic carrageen moss pudding for dessert. My mom used to make us carrageen pudding when we were kids. It was, it, it's a very simple, traditional Irish dessert. So basically, this is carrageen moss seaweed. Even though it's been well cleaned when it's harvested and well rinsed, you're going to have to do that again. And the other thing that happens is it goes from being this very dry, crunchy seaweed into a beautiful jelly-like substance, very, very soft. So you're just kind of bringing it back to life and rehydrating it. So it's very easy to remember, about 10 grams of the moss to one liter of milk. And the one, now the traditional recipe, that's all you'd have to do, but we're going to add in a little bit of vanilla and you can add in either one vanilla pod or half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Just take a, a sharp knife and you slit your beautiful vanilla pod lengthwise and using the back of the sharp knife, okay, I'll turn it over and you can just literally slide the knife along your vanilla pod, pulling the vanilla pod along with you 
and you get all those beautiful vanilla scented seeds coming out. So you just pop that into your milk, your liter of milk that's simmering away. So by now the, the seaweed is rehydrated, it's turning, you can really see the purple color start to come back into it and you just literally put that straight into your milk and vanilla pod mixture. One liter of milk only takes one tablespoon of sugar. So it's, this, this is a dessert, but it's really low in sugar, which is fantastic. So I'm just gonna pour this now. I've got my, my uh, heat proof bowl, my tablespoon of sugar, my sieve on top, and I'm just gonna pour this you start to get the back of your wooden spoon and you just keep going over and over, keep working it through the sieve because that's your jelly agent and that's the goodness of the seaweed that you definitely want to get into your Caribbean pudding. Then you just take your whisk. Now at this stage, if you want to, you can add in some more flavors yourself. You can completely experiment. I'm experimenting all the time. Um, Bailey's cream liqueur, you can add in your food oils to give it a little taste of peppermint or citrus fruit. And the way I like to serve it is just in these old-fashioned little teacups and saucers. So right now it's piping hot and the first thing you have to do is pour it into the teacup. And then you're going to leave it cool and then pop it into the fridge to finish off setting and chilling. And then you're ready to eat your Caribbean pudding. Have it with your stewed fruit, like I said, even just a little bit of cream on top, it's beautiful. Or have it by itself. And you can feel very good about your traditional Irish dessert when you see it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Caroline. Now, after our cooking with seaweed, we're going to have some, some wonderful salads here with Rachel today from Organico. We're going to do a selection of salads. Um, we're going to do something with beetroot and um, a quinoa and some dips. Just really stuff that you would do for a barbecue. Um, we're doing quinoa first of all. Very, very quick to cook, really high in protein. Um, probably takes about 15 minutes to cook um, start to finish. You can use it in salads, you can use it alongside a curry. As soon as it's cooked, you can put a like, wide variety of different ingredients in. Today, I've got chopped up cherry tomatoes, diced up cucumber. These are some really great red and orange peppers. Give that a good stir. Once you've put your vegetables in, you can then move on to the herb. This is some coriander. Don't be scared to use lots of herbs. So that is coriander, chives, pop a little bit of basil into it. Once you've done that, the last bit to go in is some toasted seeds. We're going to use um, sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds in it. You could put them in just as they are, um, but if you like just a little bit of flavour and a different texture, um, we dress them with tamari, which is a soy sauce. Um, it's great because it's gluten free. When they're done, tip them out into a container. As soon as you do that, just shape the tamari over the top and then just leave that cool down. Um, so with um, dressing this salad, just olive oil, salt and pepper and lemon juice. The next salad that we're going to do is a beetroot. So I've got this grated and then pretty much equal quantities of carrot as well. Give those a little stir. So with this apple, just sliced it really thinly and then um, making it into something that's kind of like matchstick size pieces. Once the apple is in, then the orange, take a little bit very lightly so that you're not getting any of the kind of white, the bitter pit. Take off the skin, slice into the center, and take the little segments of orange out. After that, just the rest of it, 
the way the whole school is. The juice kind of works as part of the dressing. Once the orange is in there, then uh, the last thing to go in is a little bit of mint. So the next thing is um, a feta cheese dip. We just break that up. Into this, we're going to put um, no salt because feta cheese is naturally really salty cheese, um, but a little bit of pepper. You can either use a natural yogurt or this, which is called quark, and it is kind of a cultured, very similar, probably in between Greek style yogurt and natural yogurt. And then into that, just loads of fresh herbs. Again, don't be shy with herbs, definitely go for it. So that's basil, a little bit of coriander into it, and a few chives. This is a really, really simple one, it's almost finished now. And the last one, is a butter bean hummus. You're just putting the beans into your hand blender and into that goes some olive oil, a little bit of lemon juice, salt and pepper, and then again selection of the herbs, so some basil and some chives. And once you've done that, then you just blend it up. Probably want to keep blending it for kind of up to three or four minutes to get a really, really smooth um, paste and then check the seasoning, that's it. So you'll heat up your oil, you add in your prawns. And today what I'm going to do with the prawns is I'm going to do uh, a chili salsa. The salsa is just basically tomato, spring onion, red onion, a little bit of chili, a little bit of coriander, mixed through with olive oil and salt. So just add a little bit of that in. The heat prawns are already cooked, so you bring back the heat. A little bit of rocket, use a nice virgin olive oil, put a little bit of your the chili salsa and all the juices from the frying pan straight in. A little bit of balsamic over. To get a little bit of lemon over the dish itself. And that's it. That's your starter. Now we're going to do a main course now. We're going to do mussels for you. And here are some white wine. A little bit of oil, olive oil again. We'll put the mussels into that. And today what I'm going to do with the um, with the mussels, I'm going to use sandfire. Put some of that in and some cream. Put a pan over like that, it builds up the steam inside and it don't take long to cook. We're also going to do a dessert today, it's called an eaten mess. What it basically is, it's crushed meringues into a bowl, get your berries, you can use any berries, whichever you like. A little bit of cream, I use Chantilly cream, mix that in. Serve it in a glass, like a wine glass if you have one. Now if anybody likes to try bunch of bay prawns, they're also on the menu tonight. It's going to be a great experiment with food, you know. Like getting ingredients and try something up. And so dishes are made, you know. Again, thanks Pat. Pat from Wakanda Seafood, thank you. From these cocoa beans, we produce three kinds of chocolates. The, and the first chocolate, I'll let you pass that up here, around again, is the white chocolate. The reality of white chocolate, even if I sell some, so I don't try to put, is it's not really chocolate. Only 20 to 25 percent of cocoa content. So what is white chocolate? It's mainly cocoa butter and loads of sugar. <laughs> the second kind is the milk chocolate. Minimum 33 up to 40 percent of cocoa content. So more cocoa content, okay, but milk chocolate is still sweet. But if you eat a lot of milk chocolate, can milk chocolate can be fattening? Yes. The last kind of chocolate that we have is the, the dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, the real chocolate. Minimum 53 up to 90% of cocoa content. Is dark chocolate sweet? Not really. Dark chocolate is bitter. More the cocoa content is in the chocolate, more bitter is the chocolate. But once again, more bitter doesn't mean better. No, the good news of today is dark chocolate good for you. The cocoa beans is one of the strongest antioxidants. Antioxidants, it regulates the blood flow in your body. Because it regulates the blood flow in your body, it prevents the heart disease. Dark chocolate as well reduce the bad cholesterol. 
Okay? Because it's a stimulant as well, it's very good for the concentration and the memory. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching.